Tuesday, September the 19th. Uh, before I get into a fishing report, I want to let you know there's a charity tournament this Saturday out of Ahoy's, which is uh, the Kimbling Inn, and it's uh, Cross Trail Outfitters. It's a great organization. They take uh, young boys and girls, send them to different hunting, fishing camps all over. So it, it's a great uh, cause, and it's actually a $100 entry fee, guaranteed $1,500 for first place, and I think it's paying uh, two big bass places. So if you get a chance, uh, you need to come out and have a little fun and, and fish it. But the lake level is about 9, 12, and 3 quarter, which is about two and a half feet below uh, summer pool. And the water temperature is actually starting to cool down. Now, I did find, I was up in the James River in Flat Creek today, and it's about four, a good four degrees colder than the main lake. I found a lot of 63, or not 63, I'm sorry, 73 degree water temperature up there. But uh, the main lake seems to still be in the high 70s. And most of the past week, week and a half, I've been fishing Kimberling City, Ants Creek, up around Baxter, Campbell Point. And, you know, uh, September and October, to me, I think is, is some of the toughest time of year to fish. The fish are kind of in a transition, but, you know, it's still summer uh, as far as water temperatures. We've still got a pretty hard thermal climb, about, you know, 25 feet. Uh, one day, you know, it seems like we catch them pretty good. The next day, I mean, it's, it's just really tough. But there's been a little bit of a top water bite, you know, on like a, a waffle plopper, uh, Cyclone Junior. I like to throw, if it's real slick, I like to take and throw this little spro Cyclone Junior. A uh, little bit of chop on the water, I'll throw like a Whopper Plopper or you can throw a, 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 the Berkeley Chopo. It just seems like you got to cover a lot of water to get a few bites, but the, you know, have been a few decent bites. But most of the fish we've been catching or I've been catching on my guide trips have been on a drop shot and a jig, and they've uh, pretty much all been, you know, main lake points, a lot of flat gravel, and it seems like you gotta have a channel on one side. I know we talk about the same stuff kind of all summer, but it's still kind of a summertime pattern. But the majority of the fish seem to be, you know, 25 to 35 feet deep. Uh, but now you can drag a little jig out there as well. Drop shot, I'm throwing uh, chopper's worms, uh, Berkeley flat worms, uh, some Strike King dream shots, uh, a lot of different worms are working, plum colors, some green pumpkins will work, but uh, I've been catching some on a jig too, but it's been a small jig, I've been trying a big football jig, but the small jig seems to be working a little bit better, uh, you can either throw like a little jewel peewee football jig, uh, I like to throw, this is a, a Five Fish Lures Ultimate Finesse Jig, and it's got a little bit bigger hook than the, the Pee Wee football jig does, and, and the Pee Wee will work uh, good as well. It seems like the, the Pee Wee football jig, to me, works better. Uh, uh, places where there's not much brush on smooth bottoms on the gravel, the Pee Wee football jig works real good, but if you start getting around brush piles uh, and ledgy rock and timber, it seems like it gets hung up a lot more than the five fish jig does. You know, now all jigs will get hung up, if, you know, if you put them in the right place. But to me, anything that's got a football head style does not come through the brush near as good as a jig like this that's got like a, almost like a Texas rig style. It just comes through the brush and the cover better than the blunt football head. But both jigs will work. Uh, uh, I'm, I throw that peewee more on flatter banks. I get around structure and brush piles. I'll throw the five fish jigs. But, uh, you know, brown or purple, PBJ, and I'm throwing a 7 sixteenths. And, you know, a lot of these fish 25, 30 foot deep, but I'm throwing it on 12 pound uh, sun plasma braided line. And I use about an 8 or 10 pound uh, sniper leader on it. Now, if you throw, you know, I've been throwing a bigger jig as far as on a, uh, a three-quarter ounce and a five-eighths football jig on a bait caster, but it seems like the the smaller jig throwing it on a spinning rod forcing me to fish it a little slower so I can stay in contact with bottom. And I seem to be getting a few more bites. Another place I'm getting 
some bites on the jig is like on channel swings where there's timber, uh, where there's a rock transition from like big ledge rock where the channel swings out away from a bluff wall, especially if there's timber there. You know, you just gotta be real methodic and work the jig down the, down the ledges and around the trees. And there's been, you know, some better largemouth there, but it's, it's a slow bite. Now, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I went up in the rivers today, Flat Creek and in the James, and I'm finally starting to see a lot of bait fish. You know, a lot of uh, big threadfin shad. Uh, the baits kind of school up, and from time to time throughout the day, there was, you know, fish chasing them. And I was able to catch them on square bills. And I think there's a lot of different ways you can catch them out there. Uh, I like to throw a square bill, so I'm going to throw it 90% of the time, but you can slow roll a spinner bait. Uh, you can use a, a chatter bait. But I've been throwing a few different square bills. I like to throw shad color because the fish are chasing the shad around. And the shad seem to be about, you know, two to three inches long. But this little Spro 165, and a, if you want something a little smaller, the Fat Papa uh, 55. And they're kind of equivalent to, like this is the same size as Strike King 1.5. And this uh, Hunter 65's a little bit smaller than the, Oh, uh, Strike King 2.5. But, you know, anyways, in the, I'm throwing mainly shad colors, and I'm working these underneath the bait. You'll see the feeds every once in a while, and you'll see the big clouds of shad. I'm not seeing them on the electronics. I mean, I'm up there fishing where it's only about 10, 12 foot of water is all that's up there in the channel. But you'll see the big schools of shad just burn that bait through it. Any kind of wood up there you want to throw, uh, the crank crankbait by it, a top water bait, or even take a small jig or a Texas rig worm, uh, flip it in any kind of wood that you see. If you can't get bit on the mud flats, you know, chasing the shad, go over to the channel bank. There's usually a little bit of rock before it goes to mud. Uh, fish a little bit of that with, like, say, a small jig or even a square bill there as well. But, you know, as the water cools down, uh, it's good to see the bait back in there, you know, the fish will be coming, and I'm also starting to see bait back in the major creeks on the main lake as well. But I think we need this water to cool down a little bit more. Now, once that thermocline breaks up, a lot of these fish that have been out there 25 to 30 foot, some of them are going to start going real deep. When that, whenever that thermocline breaks up, some go shallow, and some will start getting down there 45, 50 foot. And that's when you got to start using your live scope, get out in the center of these big creeks and try to find the bait and uh, the fish as well. But uh, a key to a lot of my drop shot and jig fish, even out there deeper, seems to be the bait. Another thing to try out there is like a white uh, jigging spoon, a three quarter ounce to one ounce spoon, especially if you get around some active fish. We've been able to get, whenever we get a bite, seems like we'll get five or six bites in a small area, then we gotta start searching around again. So, uh, till next week, good, good luck, good fishing.